I want to talk to you today about something you may even have in your hand at this very moment, a cup of coffee. Now, how many of us drink coffee here? Yep, so we're part of the 66% of people in the United States who drink at least two cups of coffee a day, keeps us going, revs us up, tastes great. But guess what, folks? Science tells us that due to climate change, around 50% of coffee lands will no longer be able to grow coffee within the century. And that's bad news for us coffee drinkers, sure. But it's disastrous news for 12 and a half million farmers worldwide whose livelihoods depend on this crop. And here's the thing. Poverty today at the global level is concentrated in a single profession, farming. More than two billion people, or two thirds of the world's poor, depend on farming as their primary source of income for food security, access to health care, opportunity for education. The good news, however, is that same cup of coffee has great potential to help us as a people and as a planet. So to save our beloved coffee and all the benefits that come with it, we need a more comprehensive approach to the existential crisis of climate change. In late 2023, the global community gathered in Dubai to address the climate crisis at COP28. A big point of discussion was, yes, we must continue moving away from fossil fuels and decarbonizing the energy sector. But we cannot combat climate change without nature-based solutions. Now, what do I mean by nature-based solutions? I mean healthy soils and thriving forests which are able to remove CO2 from the atmosphere through carbon sequestration at massive scale. I mean protection, restoration, sustainable management of ecosystems and landscapes in ways that simultaneously address societal challenges and benefit nature. And back to our cup of joe, when grown in the right way for people and planet, it can do precisely what I've described. And here's how. This is called agroforestry, which is an ancient agricultural technique that's gaining global traction as a solution to the climate and nature crises. Agroforestry is the intentional combination of trees with shrubs and crops like coffee, cocoa, or corn to create a resilient ecosystem that benefits farmers, biodiversity, and the climate. And agroforestry is one of many regenerative agricultural practices, that is, farming techniques that improve rather than destroy or deplete soil or biodiversity. And regenerative agriculture can help us to reverse decades and decades of global biological degeneration. And who holds one of the keys to unlocking nature-based solutions in agriculture and reversing that biological degeneration? Smallholder farmers do. People on the front lines of climate change, family farmers across the global south who are the solutions providers that so many faraway decision makers too easily ignore. There's a mountain of evidence that smallholder farmers, local people, indigenous communities are the most effective guardians of the richest landscapes on earth in carbon and species diversity like tropical forest regions and they should be at the heart of any nature-based solution. Yet paradoxically, paradoxically, far too often they're left out of the conversation and don't receive the investment they deserve, and the numbers reflect this. Of the $630 billion annually in total global climate finance, that is, financial products specifically designated to climate solutions, less than 1% goes to smallholder farmers. That's not just a moral failure, it's a massive missed opportunity to direct resources into the hands of frontline communities best positioned to be climate action leaders. But there's a growing number of people and organizations and alliances out there who are changing this. At my organization, for instance, Root Capital, we have found a way to invest nearly $2 billion to date, at the grassroots level, in agricultural businesses like farmer-owned coffee cooperatives that are deeply rooted 
in local communities. Let me tell you about one of them in eastern Uganda called the Mount Elgon Agroforestry Communities Cooperative Enterprise, or MIAC. MIAC has more than 3,000 farmers located in and around the buffer zone of the Mount Elgon Biosphere Reserve, a hugely biodiverse ecosystem. Its watershed is the main contributor to the major rivers draining into Lake Victoria. Tragically, Mount Elgon has experienced 400 landslides in the past decade or so, with hundreds of people killed and thousands more displaced, all tied to a dramatic increase in flash floods and torrential downpours in recent years. Root Capital started working with MIAC in 2019 with initial training in business operations and financial fundamentals. We loaned the cooperative $150,000 in 2020, their first loan ever, which they used to pay farmers on time and at fair market value for their coffee crops. COVID hit that same year. We provided emergency support for purchase of masks and PPE to save lives and ensure business continuity. We partnered with MIAC to strengthen capacity in agronomy, in gender equity, and in climate resilience planning, which included digitization of farmer-level data collection and more sophisticated data management systems. And since 2020, MIAC has increased its coffee sales by five times to well over a million dollars annually, and we've increased our loans to the co-op fourfold. Meanwhile, Today, MIAC's farmers are planting 11 million trees as part of an agroforestry intensification and reforestation campaign to sequester carbon and to mitigate soil erosion, a major cause of landslides on Mount Elgon. As a world, we need more MIACs. We must ramp up and sustain massive adoption of regenerative agricultural practices and climate smart innovations, all led by or matched with local knowledge and local wisdom and designed in ways that work for local communities. Right now, everybody's thinking about the climate crisis through the lens of government and even bigger corporations, but this isn't the whole picture. We must invest in the people and communities who've been stewards of the land for generations. Consumers, corporations, governments must all reframe our understanding of the climate crisis and take action now by investing at the grassroots level with speed and at scale. It will benefit everyone, farmers, shoppers, and especially the planet. And remember, we here in the United States were once a nation of farmers. Today, only 2% of our population are farmers, but much of the rest of the world, two billion people plus, still actively live and work on the land. This vast network of agricultural communities is an untapped resource ready to be mobilized in the fight against the climate crisis. Empowering and collaborating with these communities can become a linchpin in our efforts to fight climate change. Together we can sow the seeds of change and cultivate a sustainable future for generations to come. And what are the consequences if we don't start investing this way? The stakes are high. We'll see rapid continued deforestation, crippling inequity, and catastrophic weather events. And that's very personal for all of us. I've had the joy of bringing my kids with me to work over the years. These pictures are a little old, two of those kiddos are already in or beyond college. But I know that as young people, having spent time with frontline farming communities, they understand where the solutions lie. And I encourage you to reframe your understanding of the climate crisis. Every morning when you're drinking your cup of coffee, take a few moments to think about the farmer that brought it to you. How might you support that farmer and their community as a frontline force for climate action. Thank you.